Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be talking about a brand new topic today and it's called the multiple regression model. So we have discussed and uh, finished a lot of aspects about your simple regression model, simple linear regression model. So now we'll be shifting towards the multiple regression model. So in the simple uh, linear regression model, we know that there were only two variables, the x and the y variable. So the y variable, that is the regressant, was dependent on just one single variable, that is your x variable or the regressor. So in the case of multiple regression model, there are more than one variable that are, that are affecting the regressant or the y variable. Okay, so usually this is the case like in in, in a practical sense uh, your, your regressant is you know affected by a lot of uh, different regressors okay so it's it's uh, very unlikely that there's a single variable that is affecting a particular variable so uh, just like for example let's take the case of your demand of a commodity demand of a commodity so when we study the law of demand we say that the quantity demanded depends inversely on the price or, or there is an inverse relation between the price and the quantity demanded. So when we study this relationship, we assume that the other factors that might affect the demand of a commodity are held constant. So it means that it means that demand as a variable is being affected by a lot of other variables such as such as your price, your income, the available substitutes, the available complements and a lot of other factors. So there is not a single variable that is affecting the demand, but there are multiple variables. Okay. And in order to model the effect of these variables on the demand, we need a multiple regression model. Okay. So in all such, such, uh, such situations where my Y variable is being affected by multiple variables, multiple X variables, I need a multiple regression model to uh, calculate the effect of these variables on the regressant. That is the demand here, demand in this case. So uh, if I create a model, so my demand is being affected by your price, by your income, by the available substitutes and the available complements. Okay. So this is how I can create a multiple regression model, right? So the simplest multiple regression model, the simplest multiple regression model is your three variable regression model. Okay. So this is the example of the population regression function of a three variable regression model. So I have the Y that is the regressant, rig recent, and these are my regressors. So there are two regressors here. Okay. So it is the case of three variables, variable one, variable two, variable three, right? So my Y I is equal to beta one plus beta two X two I plus beta three X three I plus U I. So uh, just uh, focus or just pay attention to, to the notations here. Uh, the variable associated with beta 2 is called x2i with beta 3 it's called x3i so just for the sake of convenience and understanding how this pattern is being created you can assume that uh, the variable associated with x uh, beta 1 is x1i but it is equal to 1 so this is uh, free of any variable right so this x1i x2i x3i in this pa patterns variables are being added right uh, just for the sake of understanding th this has been mentioned Right, so this is the population regression function of a three variable multiple regression model, right? So beta one gives mean or average effect of Y of effect on Y of all the variables excluded from the models or average of Y when X2 and X3 are set equal to zero. So if I don't include any of these variables, what is the average effect of uh, what is the average value of y? It will be equal to your beta one value. Okay. So when no variables are modeled in this regression equation, then beta one is the average value of y. 
or in other other way in the other way i can say that when in this model in this regression model if x2 and x3 are set equal to 0 then i'm left with just beta 1 value right so the average value of uh, the y variable will be equal to your beta 1 value so this is the interpretation of beta 1 so now so just uh, like in the case of your simple linear regression model we had uh, assumed certain things okay so we had certain assumptions in the model so when we moved ahead with the model before that we had learned about certain assumptions about the model so similarly in the case of multiple regression model we have a set of assumptions so there are nine assumptions or there are nine assumptions in in the case of uh, multiple regression model multiple regression model we have nine assumption in the case of simple linear regression model we had seven assumptions so these seven assumptions were or are the same as your previous assumptions of your sing, uh, si uh, simple linear regression model okay so just let's just recall very quickly what these assumptions were and then we'll focus on the two new assumptions of this model okay so we have already done these assumptions when we have discussed the uh, simple linear regression model slrm okay so you can go back and check the video so the first assumption is that uh, the model is linear in parameters so we know what this means okay parameters that is your beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 so they are linear okay they don't uh, follow any other function or right so the model is linear in parameter the second assumption is that fixed x values or x values independent of the error term okay so we have fixed x value which are independent of the error term okay so the what this means st uh, st uh, statistically is that the covariance between my ui and the x variable or the error term and the x variables variables is equal to zero right the third assumption is that zero mean value of ui or the error term or the expected value of the error term is equal to zero so all these assumptions we have discussed in detail in the previous videos so you can go back and check the videos for more and deeper understanding if you haven't seen those videos right then we have the assumption of homoscedasticity it means constant variance of the error term right then we have no auto correlation which means that my error terms are uncorrelated or there the covariance between my error terms two error terms any two error terms is equal to zero right then i have the sixth sixth assumption it says that the observations n must be greater than the number of parameters to be estimated so in this case we have three parameters that are estimated so my n must be greater than three in the case of my slrm that is a simple linear regression model the parameters that were to be estimated were two two parameters had to be estimated over there so my n was greater than two right then i have the uh, seventh assumption it says that there must be variation in the value of x variable right so we have different values different fixed values of x variable so for each value of x variable we try to find the related y value okay and based on these values we try to estimate or uh, get a average of the y value right so there must be a variation in the x value there shouldn't be a single x variable single value of x variable at which we are uh, testing the model right so these seven assumptions were the similar assumptions that we had discussed in the slrm model right these two assumptions these two are specific for the multiple regression model and we will discuss these assumption one by one so we'll discuss this first here and this will come up in a later stage so it's a separate topic on its own so we'll discuss this there itself when it comes out at a later stage so the eighth assumption says that no exact 
collinearity collinearity between my x variables that is no exact linear relationship between x2 and x3 so we'll see what this means in a very short while okay till then the ninth assumption says that there is no specification bias that is the model is correctly specified okay so what this means in a very simple sense is that the variables that you are choosing choosing okay so if if you're talking about demand okay it means that the variables that you will choose here your x2 x3 x4 so that should be related to your demand so uh, in in the intuitive sense whatever variables you are choosing here they must be affecting your demand in some way or the other so you shouldn't you know just bring on any variable and try to check okay whether it's affecting the demand or not so this is a very simple uh, explanation of this assumption so we'll discuss this more deeply in the upcoming videos right so these are the two extra assumptions for this multiple li uh, linear re regression model right let's just discuss your assumption number eight which is called the assumption of no collinearity or no multi collinearity okay so if in the three three variable case we can say no col uh, collinearity between x2 and x3 in the case of multiple more variables more than three variables we can say there is no multi collinearity okay so what this means is so there exists no set of numbers so say lambda 2 and lambda 3 are two numbers two random numbers and both of them can't be equal to zero at the same time okay this uh, this is the assumption here so there exist two set of numbers lambda 2 and lambda 3 such that lambda 2 into x2 i plus lambda 3 into x3 i is equal to zero so this relation should not hold true for any two values of lambda 2 and lambda 3 or for any two numbers lambda 2 and lambda 3 okay if such relation exists or if there exists lambda 2 and lambda 3 such that this relation exists then x2 and x3 are collinear okay so this is what this means right i hope this is clear let's see further so what is the logic logic be, uh, behind the assumption of multi no multi collinearity what is the logic behind this assumption so let's say uh, there's an example so we'll try to understand this with the example so where y is called the consumption x2 is your income and x3 is your wealth so somehow we are trying to model uh, a relation wherein we want to see how your consumption is related to your income and wealth right so this says that or this means that y is linearly related to income and wealth or income and wealth affect your consumption right this is what this means or this is what we are trying to model this is what we want to test or estimate right so if there is an exact relationship between income and wealth so what this means is if there is a relationship between income and wealth right so we why do we assume multi uh, no multi collinearity because if there exists a relationship between my income and wealth that is x2 and x3 here then we have only one independent variable left instead of two right and we cannot determine the independent impact of income and wealth on the consumption so that is what is the entire entire purpose of uh, having this multiple regression model so that we can estimate beta 2 and beta 3 in order to check how income and wealth are independently affecting your consumption but if you don't have this assumption of no multi collinearity it means that we will not be able to check the independent impact because if they are related if they are related your x2 and x3 are related it means that uh, we um, there is a sing it, it it looks like that there's a single variable that is affecting the consumption so there is no independent effect left or remain to test so let's this become this will become more clear here so if suppose there's a relationship between your uh, wealth and this is your income so your wealth is twice your income so whatever your income is your wealth will be twice of that so this is the relation that uh, wealth 
and income are following so if this is the case so if x and y x2 and x3 are related then my model becomes yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xi beta 2 x2i plus beta 3 into twice of x2i plus ui so if i rearrange this this is what i'll get this is what i'll get so there's a single variable left now instead of two variables right so the independent impact of income and well that is beta 2 and beta 3 is lost because now i get a single new new coefficient that is giving the overall impact of the two variables not the independent impact of the two variables right so uh, this becomes your yi becomes uh, beta 1 plus alpha into x2i plus ui where alpha is equal to your beta 2 plus twice of beta 2 twice of beta 3 right so therefore we get a combined effect of alpha on running the regression so in, so our purpose was to uh, estimate beta 2 and beta 3 to check whether what is the impact of independent impact of your wealth and income on the consumption but uh, because of uh, a relation existing between your x2 and the x3 variable we are not able to do it, do it because we are uh, we are getting a combined effect alpha right on consumption so this is the introduction of your multiple regression model and uh, we have discussed an assumption so the assumption that we have discussed just now is majorly theoretical only because in practical sense when we you know actually go and try to check the relationship between two variables okay and if when we go for data collection it is practically impossible for two variables to not be related like there will always exist some sort of relationship so it's really hard uh, for multi collinearity to not exist but uh, <clears throat> since it serves the model better so that is why we uh, follow this assumption right so no multi collinearity this is important does not rule out non linear relationship between two variables like x3 i is equal to x2 i whole square right so when we talk about no multi collinearity it means that we are ruling out the linear relationship between the two variables the two independent variables okay we are not ruling out the non linear relationship between the variables so that can exist okay right so just remember this point this is very important so i hope this video made some sense and you got some insights into the uh, functioning of the multiple regression model so we'll move ahead with other aspects of the model so i'll meet you soon in the next video till then take care